In this video, I'm going to share with you private placement programs, how to participate in them correctly. And I'm going to bust a lot of myths for you, and I'm going to show you how to actually get the returns that you deserve to get. Hi, I'm Tamer Zeman from LearnerCred.ai. My organization is the best in class in three specific areas. One is Learner Credit. <laughs> we provide lots of credit to businesses. We can go up to $3 billion using a Rent a Rich Uncle program or a Money Multiplier program or uh, provide non recourse loans. A second area that we are really best in class in is monetizing banking instruments, whether it's documentary letters of credit, uh, bank guarantees, standby letters of credit, like that. Third area is that we have a very unique offerings in the era of private placement program. And today I'm going to share with you the best practices in what to do, how to do it, all like that. Uh, before I go on, I want to invite you to ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, please make sure you, you click on the subscribe button that way. And well, you know, every time we provide some new content, some new strategies, offer tools uh, uh, like that, you've got access to it and you can you can get get that information right away uh, private placement program so what is it I've got a one-hour video on our website landcred.ai uh, that you can you can go and check out and how uh, 50 million dollar um, if you have like 50 million dollars I show you how it turns into become nine billion dollars using credit markets and how it works how private placement programs work specifically I provide you I think three customer walkthroughs in a private placement program so you can actually see what the process of getting in looks like and if you subscribe to my youtube channel you see various different documents and how to fill them up how to avoid uh, doing mistakes other people do like that but in this video i want to talk about what our clients are doing incorrectly before they meet us when it comes to private placement programs the first thing that i believe or i see a lot of our clients do is they just don't know how to work with the right broker Unfortunately, a lot of what I call joker brokers out there, a lot of these brokers don't have access to true private placement uh, providers. Uh, what they have access to is another broker, and another broker, and another broker, and another broker, and all brokers will tell you, I have the private placement guy, or I am the private placement guy. But when you talk to that broker, who they are introducing you to as a sales guy, for what they think is a private placement guy, but read really that broker is a broker for another broker for another broker, <laughs> somewhere in that chain. A lot of people have lied to each other <laughs> on who the real platform is. I know that <laughs> because we get paid a lot of money <laughs> to do background checking, vetting of these platform providers. <laughs> and when we have our resources look into these brokers that claim to be platform providers and we look at their bank accounts we did one a couple of months ago <laughs> the guy had only 500 pounds like really 500 pounds <laughs> in his bank account <laughs> i apologize i shouldn't laugh <laughs> and he claimed to be a private placement provider <laughs> like an actual trade desk <laughs> and uh, <coughs> I see a lot of brokers that claim I have a private placement guy, I own the private placement guy. I've shared in private placement guy and made me start to ask them our questions. Show me a level A banking license. Don't see a level A banking license. So so we know how to vet a lot of these things out. But bottom line is that I find that a lot of my clients have relationships with inauthentic brokers or what I call joker brokers out there or brokers that believe are under the illusion that the guy that they're working with is truly a platform provider, but read that guy's a sales guy for, for a platform, but it's not the real platform guy kind of thing. And these brokers provide a lot of the wrong information, and they somehow get into these swift codes. Only if you do an MT-79 and do a to go into an MT-310, and we're going to do this empty this and empty that and swift that, and it's just a lot of nonsense out there. So that's just unfortunately about... Uh, a lot of junk information out there. Um, 
The other thing that I find a lot of the challenges my clients have is they don't know how to vet a platform provider. Uh, they will come up with things like if you put up $50 million in a standby of credit, or if you give me $500,000 or some, some number like that, you're going to become a trillionaire. And they don't have a way to vet the platform. They just want, a lot of my clients don't have a vehicle in knowing how to vet them out. That's when they retain us because we have former FBICA agents that we actually vet out a lot of these uh, so-called, what I call fraudulent private placement providers. Uh, the other challenge, and this is a big, big, big part of why a lot of my clients uh, get stuck, is they don't own the money. And that's a big one. Uh, I have clients who they're getting a standby of credit from a supplier, a customer, a rich uncle, something like that. They don't own the money. Um, most people that have a hundred million dollars sitting around know about private placement pro programs and participate in them. Uh, therefore, the market that usually is looking for these private placement providers are people trying to get lines of credit or SPLCs or money, but most of the clients that come to me, they don't own the capital that they're looking for. Uh, when you go in, if you talk to a broker who claims that they know a private placement provider or they can help you get into a private placement uh, platform, one of the questions you want to ask that provider is, how many clients do you have who are in trade? Now, if you ask me that question, I'm not going to give you that answer. Just it's my intellectual property and I don't need to share that. To, to create credibility, nor am I looking to create additional credibility than the brand that my organization does have. However, if you do ask a lot of brokers how many clients you have in private placement uh, things, a lot of them will, will say none, or they will give you a different answer, or they'll beat the bush, whatever. Uh, but the real ones will tell you that they take a lot of clients to what they think, think are private placement uh, platforms, and the clients fail something called due, dil due diligence. And the reason the clients fail due diligence is simply because the client doesn't own the money. That's just, those are the biggest mistakes clients do. So having said that, I want to talk about what we do differently, how we approach it, like how I approach it significantly differently. So before we participate in private placement uh, uh, platforms, uh, when the clients at least call us and say, hey, I have a private placement provider, I want you to check them out, I very quickly get former FBI, former CA agents to do background checking on the platform. When I have my guys do a background check on the platform, I can now authenticate the platform, and I can quick, quickly swift through the BS that's out there, period. What I then do, and this is our intellectual property, is when my client is getting money from a rich uncle, my client's getting money from an SBLC, my client's getting it, however they're getting money from an investment, whatever, it's an intellectual property that I have from my years of experience in how I can, you know, maybe a better word first, clean the money, uh, but how do I legally clean the money so that when my client wants to go into a private placement uh, platform and fills the CIS, authentically, legally, that money is theirs. Like, I really help my clients do that. And I feel I'm very, very, very good at it. Like, it's just my natural act, is I'm very good in, in creative thinking, out-of-box thinking, and being fully transparent with my client, and this is how I think you should do it correctly, like that. Um, that really supports the client in terms of the uh, due diligence part of it. Uh, the real, real, real private placement providers do a lot of due diligence on the client, but more important, they do due diligence on the source of the capital. That's really important for them. Most of my clients don't know how to do due diligence on the platforms. At best, at best that I have seen, they're going to hire attorney to assist them. But uh, a guy who's never been on a date, if I can, a bad analogy, but a guy who's never been on a date to say, can you go on a date? And it's the first time, like, uh, like an attorney's first time to try to figure out what a private placement provider is. Most of the time, not always, most of the time it backfires. An attorney never gets fired for saying, no, don't do this. So if you want to go, if you want a list of trusted attorneys who know what a private placement provider is, and have helped clients um, 
you know, access private placement providers have told clients what to look for like that. I have a list of them. And I want to tell you that this is not hundreds and thousands of attorneys. It's not. It's very selective, like really good attorneys who, who know how to do this correctly. Uh, what we do is uh, is that we we help my I help my clients to figure out how to make their money their money, uh, and that's usually intellectual property that we use. But that's that's a key 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 part is to make sure that when you want to go into private placement placement, how do you legally claim that your money the money you're putting up is your money? That part you want to think that through. You want to have a securities attorney with you. If you don't have a good securities attorney. We can only, uh, certainly help uh, some some of our clients with getting access. So no no problem. Um, so once you're into the platform, the part that's really 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 super important to know, and this is another part where a lot of my clients has failed, is they don't do something called that diversify their 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 funds. Um, here's what I'm going to tell you for myself. I know a bunch of people that have successfully participated in private placement programs. And literally what they've done is retire after that because that's what their intention was. The part that nobody seems to think or nobody wants to think that far or nobody's somehow thinking capabilities around the planet seems to shrink is the guy who's running the private place man, right? Guess what he wants to do or guess what she wants to do? They too want to retire financially. I know some very genuine, authentic private placement providers where the guy has done it a few times and now he's got more money for his great-great-grandchildren. And guess what he does? He quits. He does what he, he accomplishes, what he wants to do. At the private placement provider, he closes the lights off and he goes home. Like really, that's just a natural human way human way of being about it and a lot of my clients don't think that way so they bump into the wrong uh, you know what I call fraudulent private placement providers but even when they get into the right guy the authentic guy the real 12 private placement providers what they don't know is that guy's doing has done maybe four of them and this is the last one that like ad and they don't think that through so what I always recommend my clients to do is if you're going to put up money with a private placement provider that you have picked, that you selected, that you like, please reach out to us and have our F former FBI people do background checks on the platform. However, this is however, you might also be interested in diversifying. So if you got, let's say, $50 million, as an example, put $25 million in one of your private placement providers. And we know I'm a broker, and strategically, I really don't want to be a broker. But I can introduce you to, we could introduce you to other brokers that we know, we trust, that have private placement uh, platforms that actually work. And this way, if you diversify, the probability of one of the two, or one of the four, or one of the ten, or however many ways you want to diversify, will actually pay out, and will pay out handsomely. And if you want to do it, once again, I've seen people who want to press a repeat button and they put money with the same broker, same platform, but the platform didn't perform. And unfortunately, for confidentiality reason, I can't talk about why platforms don't perform the second time around, right? But uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend diversifying. Uh, that's one of the things that we do differently when we participate as a client ourselves is we also diversify. And then find the next thing that you want to think about is paymaster. Uh, if you are, I don't want to say playing with other people's money, but if you are bringing other people's money into a private placement uh, uh, program, you seriously want to think about who the paymaster is. You want to make sure you've got a structure set up so the owner, the real owner of the money or of this bunch of them, get paid out by the paymaster the same day and time as you do. And if you do it that way, I can tell you it's very clean. On the paymaster part, the one area I've seen a lot of my clients get stuck, and this is just unfortunate, is a lot of my clients have something called virgin accounts. And virgin accounts haven't seen 100, 150 million, or $25 million coming to it every month. They just haven't seen it. And so when the AML department of your bank, AML being anti-money laundry department of your bank, sees a virgin account getting $25 million, guess what? They put a freeze on it. They put a hole on it. They're nervous about this. They want to find out what's the source of this fund. 
enough clients who've got money in a virgin account for over a year and the money is now being released. <clears throat> now imagine if you borrowed the money from a bank, if you borrowed the money from a rich uncle, you have whatever, now you really, really, really stuck. And so the paymaster is one that I really highly recommend for you to consider at the payout time. Uh, my name is Tamer Zam from LineCredit.ai. If we can be of help to you, love to help you out. My staff is awesome. We, I really, truly, truly believe we are world class in the areas that we we uh, we offer services in and provide lines of credit to businesses, monetizing banking instruments, and assisting clients with uh, private placement programs. I look forward to the opportunity of working with you. Thank you. Thank you.